Boom. Another successful landing of the Boeing jumbo jet right on the runway. <laughs> um, I make videos about several topics, obviously, so. And uh, metaphysics is all encompassing. There's no distinction between physics and metaphysics. That's like uh, some fool saying the head side of a coin is one thing, the tail side is another. You know, the wise person is like, no, it's the coin, which encompasses the silver and the head and the tail, which are both phenomena of the exact same silverage, um, the material or metal of the coinage. In live stream um, of incredible interest over many moons, everybody keeps asking about out-of-body experiences. As I've said countless thousands of times. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't partake of substances. Um, however, I do engage in theurgy, not as often as I like. Theurgy, of course, is uh, retroductive uh, synthesis. Retroduction, of course, is apophaticism. The Indians called it neti neti. They also called it via negativa. Doesn't matter. Um, but when I had hypothermia about uh, two weeks ago, or I got really, really chilled, I had a very prolonged uh, out-of-body experience. Um, but as a side note, I wanted to say before stating that, that uh, I have out-of-body experiences um, at least once or twice a week. Uh, they're very short. Um, they're the side effect of disembodiment, which is theurgy, which is synthesis, which is retroduction. Uh, recollection in the platonic and uh, theurgic sense, i.e. the metaphysical sense, uh, recollection uh, means uh, diminution of dilution. Diminution of dilution, I mean, to dilute something like taking some dye and squirting it in some water, like some red dye. I mean, you'll first see the red dye, then it'll, it'll uh, diminish and dilute into the water. That recollection, of course, would be the reversal process. And in so doing, we actually uh, have a disassociation between the consubstantiality between uh, matter and spirit. It's just kind of like... Uh, this uh, radio here, which doesn't have any batteries in it currently, so I guess it's a dead, uh, dead radio. We actually have the signal. We have the physical radio composed of transistors and batteries and circuits and whatnot. And then, of course, we have the broadcast. The broadcast, of course, would be the living entity, which is consciousness itself. Of course, we can't take it too far with the radio. The radio is not conscious, nor is it alive. Um, foolish people, of which there are innumerable foolish people on this earth, think that metaphysics is somehow supernatural or uh, illogical or some sort of, you know, like crazy stuff you'd see in a Harry Potter movie. By the way, I hate Harry Potter movies. I, <laughs> I watched one once because I was watching it with somebody else with horrible movies. You know, this crazy stuff. It's like, well, that's just ridiculous. Like a talking wall painting and all sorts of crazy. And metaphysics is not like that at all. Um, explaining, uh, now, supernatural just means, or paranormal, just means it's outside the sphere of uh, existential uh, corporeal experiences, things we experience every day. It's only supernatural to, I mean, uh, dry land is supernatural to a fish. You know, a fish doesn't have any idea what it's like to chew gum and bebop down the streets, you know, on dry land. I mean, that's supernatural to a fish. So most things are paranormal and supernatural to ignorant human beings. I mean, it's just the nature of their existence. Um, but out-of-body experiences, I wanted to give a couple of brief analogies, is not supernatural in an absolutist sense, meaning ridiculous, like crazy garbage you'd see in a Harry Potter movie. You know, just ludicrous nonsense you'd see in a movie. And it's not ultimately supernatural or paranormal. However, of course, it is outside the sphere of existential existence. Um, a close, and I don't know if you know this or not, you can look it up, uh, upper sideband, or lower sideband uh, radio transmissions. We actually have amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. We actually have the carrier signal, meaning the broadcast, and you can actually modulate the upper sideband or the lower sideband. For example, and by the way, this is a tool of spies and it's a tool of governments. It's, it's a tool used for all sorts of stuff. You could be listening to a conventional radio signal and have no clue that upper sideband and lower sideband are transmitting you know, top secret information or God knows what. An out-of-body experience, and this is the best analogy that I could come up with, would be like if you're working in a retail store, you are the consciousness inside that retail store, which would be the body. You know all your surroundings. 
you know, you're looking around the store, you interact with things that come into the retail store where you work. An out-of-body experience would be you're still in the same, uh, you're still embodied, you're still connected uh, to that corporeal form, but you're in the back room looking through like a two-way mirror at what's going on. It'd be no different than uh, one's nature um, becoming, for a brief period of time, an upper sideband or a lower sideband signal. Um, like when I was hypothermic a couple weeks ago, it was just a fantastical... It was very painful because I was uh, freezing and in such misery. I'm not harping about this, but everybody wants to talk about out-of-body experiences. And I had uh, a prolonged out-of-body experience, out -of experience of roughly uh, something like five hours plus just due to extreme uh, misery. I had uh, disassociated um, my uh, witnessing self as a crude expression. It would be, of course, uh, the, the noose of the Greeks, sort of the chitta of the ancient uh, Indians, where it, I had uh, taken that uh, apart from the carrier signal, which would be conventional human consciousness or awareness, um, as seen through and reflected through the psychophysical being. And uh, it's not, like I said, it's not paranormal. It's uh, not, uh, you know, it's not uh, fantastical. It's hyperlogical. Metaphysics from the uh, Platonic, uh, Indian, Aristotelian, and Pythagorean uh, um, uh, investigation and also to uh, inve uh, understanding is hyperlogical. It is that you are relative to how you normally are, and I was, um, now an upper sideband or lower sideband signal displaced from the actual carrier wave and the, uh, the physical object. Like, people will say, uh, you know, I saw myself walking around and doing stuff and I was not, I was not that person. Um, it is a disjointment of uh, the uh, existential corporeal consciousness, which is, which is consubstantial to the psychophysical. In other words, you're retracting back, and uh, the best analogy I could think of, and mo maybe mo most of you do or do not know, and you could look this up, about what a, uh, a uh, upper sideband or lower sideband signal is. In radio communications, a sideband is a band of frequencies higher or lower, higher or lower uh, than the carrier frequency. Um, so people don't like to talk about that, or maybe they do more these days than they used to, but... An out-of-body experience is not uh, like a, a dysfunction of consciousness, like, you know, you're out of your mind. That's why you had an out-of-body experience. You know, you're doing some illicit substance, which I never do and never have done, never. In my case, it was uh, spurned on from uh, hypothermia and, uh, you know, this incredible fatigue resultant to hypothermia where I had this uh, uh, fantastical voyage which is the name of a movie, I know, a fantastical voyage for about five hours plus of an out-of-body experience. But uh, out-of-body experience is hyperlogical. It's not illogical, fantastical, or paranormal at all. It's just not normal to what we are conventionally used to. Um, but it is literally a uh, diminution of the consubstantiality of, uh, of spirit and uh, the psychophysical which, of course, is then one entity, which is the living entity. The living entity is the consubstantiality, of course, in matter and spirit. That disjointment of an out-of-body experience is where the signal, not that a signal can do that, I'm just making a crude analogy, the signal of the carrier becomes an upper sideband or lower sideband, which becomes disjointed and removed or retracted back. It's kind of like the old saying that you can't see what's directly in front of you where you can't see the forest for the trees. And if all of a sudden you were to levitate yourself up above the grounds in a huge forest, you could see all the trees, you could see the whole picture, and that to a human being would, of course, would be a paranormal or, uh, you know, surreal uh, experience. But it's not an experience at all. Um, experience in the absolutest sense of metaphysics is always set of experiences experienced by the consubstantiality of the matter and spirit, i.e. The, uh, the living being. You know, like if I were to, you know, cut my finger, I would have an experience of pain or whatnot, so on and so forth. That is, uh, an experience is only relational to the psychophysical. So it's not an experience. It is a theurgic uh, uh, 
uh, gnosis and insight which is uh, not consubstantially connected. Not consubstantially connected means, of course, you are disjointed. And of course, then, of course, we state the obvious when people call it an out-of-body experience because people feel and know that they are outside of their bodies, and yet uh, to them it seems illogical. But it's actually hyperlogical. It's not uh, anything, like I said, obtuse or super, super, uh, supernatural or uh, surreal. Anyway, I made this video because people are always asking about out-of-body experiences and asking about, you know, the nature of an out-of-body experience. And uh, they're not to be shunned. Um, I, I obviously shun any sort of illicit substance use. I don't advocate for anything like that. Um, what they do is it gives people perspective. P people do these things for many, 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 many reasons, and I don't do any substance. But it gives them a perspective of insight. It's like not being able to see what's going on. It's kind of like how people are always buried in their work and they're busy just uh, pissing their lives away doing, you know, work bill taxes, you know, nonsense, laundry, garbage, garbage laundry. And it gives them perspective and it lets them retract from this mundane reality which is unreal ultimately. What we think is real is the unreal and what we think is unreal is actually the only real. That's why ignorant human beings scoff at metaphysics. Well, metaphysics is the only real. What is physical is the only unreal. This is the only unreal. That's all matter and uh, physics is a mirage. We can say a hologram. Doesn't matter, same thing. But uh, that is the metaphysics of an out-of-body experience, what it is. Um, it's simplex mechanics. It is just diminution of the consubstantiality, let me repeat that, diminution of the consubstantiality between matter and spirit, or in other words, retracting one's ontological self away from the psychophysical. When you ontologically, when you attract your ontological self, excuse me, away from the psychophysical, then there is this, of course, the out-of-body experience, this realization, this uh, insight into, uh, you know, the nature of things. And that's why people try to engage in that. But you don't need to take substances to do that. You can uh, engage in that at will whenever you want uh, through theurgic practices of synthesis. It doesn't require taking any substances. Um, there are simple ways to do it, but they don't lead to wisdom. You know, I mean, and everybody experiences, of course, can happen at death, but I mean, you, know, you say it's a wise idea to uh, cut off life just so you could have an out-of-body experience. It'll be your first and your last. Well, not your really your last, but it'll be the last one of that life. But, you know, slightly less worse than that, of course, is taking substances. And I don't do it and advocate it. And I wish people would stop asking me if I do. But uh, anyway, in a nutshell, that's the metaphysics of an out-of-body experience. It is rational and it is logical and it's not supernatural. But as I said, you know, like dry land is supernatural to a fish. So, anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, let me know. You can contact me in the description below or anything else to help out. And goodbye.